Sarah Miller's curiosity has always been piqued by mysteries. As a photographer, she had a unique perspective on the world, one that actively sought for the unknown and the ethereal. She had gone to haunted places and abandoned asylums in quest of paranormal activity, since she was so interested in photographing the unexplainable. Sarah's infatuation had developed over the years, though, and she had begun to take darker turns as a result. She stopped looking for the supernatural in other places and started looking for it in her own backyard. It all started off rather benignly. Sarah installed cameras throughout her home in an effort to capture evidence of the supernatural in her usual environment. She positioned them carefully, anticipating and recording any potential action. Sarah's fixation grew more intense as the weeks and months passed. She spent her days poring through hours of film for evidence of the paranormal. The scenes remained unremarkable, though, with her cat playing, plants swinging in the open window, and a wall clock ticking along. Her frustration grew as she questioned whether or not she had been following physical or symbolic ghosts. She really pondered abandoning her mission and going back to taking photos the old-fashioned way. But later, while she was reviewing the film from the day, she spotted it. One of the frames had a little warp to it, like a ripple in the air or a disturbance in the sky, and it drew her eye. It was brief and hardly perceptible, but it gave her the chills nonetheless. Sarah focused closely on the image, her pulse quickening. What she saw after that was incomprehensible. Words, strange enigmatic phrases engraved into the very fabric of the image, appeared in the center of the room, among the distortion. The message read, watching you, in a ghostly lettering that seemed to glimmer and fade away. As Sarah looked closer at the picture, she felt a mixture of exhilaration and uneasiness. Even though she couldn't see the thing itself, it had left a sign, a chilling announcement of its presence. Sarah spent days continuously watching the film in the hopes of catching another sight of the mysterious stalker. There were no letdowns. The messages, which appeared in several areas, grew progressively more disturbing over time, continually present, always here. As in, can you see me now? Specifically, behind you. Sarah's life and the world she knew had changed forever. The ghostly visitor that haunted her house appeared to take perverse pleasure in taunting her with these messages. A persistent, invisible presence followed her everywhere she went, its origins and purpose a disturbing mystery. But Sarah's fixation was only getting started. Unexpectedly, the supernatural began to play a role in her life, and she was desperate to learn the truth about the unseen stalker who had begun to make his presence felt. Sarah's life turned into a dogged quest for knowledge. Her fascination was driven by the ominous messages left in her images, and her home became a labyrinth of recording devices. She felt as though her entire house was being watched, making sleep impossible. The ghostly antagonist seemed to enjoy torturing its victims. As Sarah's terror grew, the messages got more ominous and intimate. Finally on my own, as they say, I'm right behind you. She found the lines written in the dust on her bedroom floor, on the steamy bathroom mirror, and on the frosty glass on a chilly winter morning. The presence of the monster could be felt in every room. Sarah was totally absorbed by her fixation. Because she was terrified the thing might follow her outdoors, she stopped venturing outside. Her loved ones became worried, but she shut them off since she couldn't bear to tell them the truth. Sarah was resolved to talk to the thing as its messages grew increasingly threatening, hoping to learn more about its history and motivations. She prepared a number of devices, including digital voice recorders, EMF detectors, and spirit boards. Anything that can provide us a look into the mystical realm. She kept trying to establish touch with the unknown by shouting into the night. The answers were never stated, but instead appeared as ghostly graffiti in her pictures, basically trapped. We'll be together forever. Sarah's dread and resolve to face the thing both increased with each communication. She was trapped in her own house and desperate for information. She sought the advice of psychics and paranormal researchers on how to deal with the evil spirit. One frigid evening, a psychic named Madame Leclerc showed up at her home. Leclerc said he could make contact with ghosts and other ethereal beings through a special channel. Sarah prayed this would finally be her big break. 
Leclerc started talking to it as she sat in the dark with the candles flickering about her. Her voice was low and rhythmic as she talked softly. Sarah stood by expectantly, ready to record any eerie occurrences. As the minutes passed into hours, the temperature in the room continued to drop. While waiting for an answer, Sarah's breath condensed into chilly clouds in the air. The spirit board's planchette started moving suddenly, revealing a message. Aware of your presence, I said, I see you, Sarah. A chilling aura enveloped her and the room appeared to shrink in on itself. Sarah was warned to leave the house by Madame Leclerc, whose expression changed dramatically as she abruptly stopped the session. Sarah, however, could not let up on her search for clarification. She realized her fate was tied to the unseen stalkers after receiving the entity's message revealing its malignant awareness of her. She had no idea how to make sense of the otherworldly forces at work, but she was eager to learn their terrifying mysteries. Sarah's life had turned into a nightmare because of the invisible stalker's constant harassment. The psychic's warning and the ominous tone of the inscriptions on her images combined to fill her with fear. However, Sarah's desire to learn more about the monster led her farther into the shadows. She started looking through old books and discussion boards for anything that would shed light on the nature of the supernatural being that had suddenly appeared in her life. She was sleepless and troubled when she stumbled into a mysterious rumor about an old and vindictive entity called the Watcher in the Shadows. The Watcher in the tale was a malicious being with the ability to seep into the lives of its victims and drive them to the point of insanity. Folklore has it that it is a soul gatherer that subsists on the terror and hopelessness of its victims. Sarah saw more and more parallels between the mythology and her own terrifying experiences as she dug further. She pondered whether or not the creature following her was the Watcher in the Shadows, and if so, how she could expect to defeat it. Sarah, intent on finding the truth, contacted Dr. Jonathan Everett, a famous paranormal researcher and expert in dealing with evil spirits. Dr. Everett met with her, and they discussed the disturbing images and notes left by the being. As he looked through the facts, Dr. Everett's face became more serious. A malignant ghost had undoubtedly infiltrated Sarah's life and its influence was becoming stronger with each message it left, he said, confirming her darkest fears. Dr. Everett's voice had a sense of urgency as he stated, We must find a way to break its hold on you. But it won't be a picnic. Evildoers like this one don't give up easily when they spot their prey. They work together to formulate an approach to the unknown stalker. Dr. Everett theorized that facing the thing head-on, along with the terror it thrived on, and bringing it into the light would be the most effective way to diminish its strength. They performed a set of rites and incantations meant to coax the being out of hiding. As they went through the rituals, Sarah's anxiety increased, but she knew it was the next logical step in her search for truth. A strange force began to permeate the room as the last words of the ritual reverberated about it. Sarah's cameras, which had been prepared to record any paranormal occurrences, suddenly stopped working. The lights went out, and there was a deathly hush. And suddenly, out of nowhere, the unseen stalker materialized. In the far corner of the room, a form emerged from the darkness, its malign influence evident. Its eyes burned with an intensity that came from another universe, and it seemed to seethe with rage. Fearfully and determinedly, Sarah and Dr. Everett held their position. They had met the monster that had plagued her for so long, but the fight was only beginning. A battle between the living and the supernatural had begun, and the Watcher in the Shadows had finally come out of hiding. A shadowy figure known as the Watcher in the Shadows confronted Sarah and Dr. Jonathan Everett in the chamber. There was an unearthly energy in the air, and the place seemed to be alive with its presence. The shadowy figure of the creature kept taking shape and its eyes were glowing with an unusual ferocity. The malice emanating from it appeared to feed off of Sarah's anxiety. Dr. Everett, an experienced investigator of the paranormal, walked forward, carrying a bottle of holy water and a metal scrap. Doggedly, he started chanting incantations meant to loosen the entity's grip on the material world. A frightening guttural shriek echoed around the chamber as the incantations were spoken. The sacred water and iron caused it agony, and it recoiled from the mixture. Within the darkness, 
Sarah caught sight of a horrified face that seemed to be screaming in silence. The shadowy one, however, was not so simply vanquished. It swung its arm, sending things hurtling through the air with unearthly velocity. The fundamental fabric of reality seemed to be tearing apart as the room distorted and twisted. Sarah and Dr. Everett held their ground, resolved to free themselves from the entity's shackles. Sarah, motivated by a combination of dread and daring, reached for her camera as Dr. Everett began his incantations. She started snapping pictures of the dark figure, capturing its aggressive stance even as her hands shook. With each click of the camera's shutter, the existence of the thing would wax and fade. After a last frantic cry, it disappeared into the night, leaving behind just the icy, lingering stillness. The paranormal force that had filled the area gradually faded, and the space reverted to its previous condition. Dr. Everett and Sarah looked at each other with relief. They had challenged the Watcher in the shadows, and, at least temporarily, succeeded in shooing it away. But they also realized that the thing wasn't really gone. The Watcher and other malevolent ghosts were resilient and they would return if given the chance. After the incident, Sarah decided to write about what happened and include some of the photos she had shot. Her goal in telling her story was to serve as a cautionary tale about the perils of pursuing the unknown with a fervor that borders on obsession. As she looked over the pictures, she got the creeps. With each capture, the dark shape of the thing seemed to fade, becoming less distinct. The act of being photographed seems to have diminished the entity. Sarah came to the conclusion that bringing the Watcher in the shadows out into the open, by capturing its likeness and disclosing its true nature to the world, might be the key to finally driving it away for good. She said she wouldn't give up on her mission and that she would use her camera as a weapon against evil supernatural powers if the creature ever returned. Sarah had yet to reach the end of her perilous voyage, but she was prepared to do it with bravery and determination. This war between the living and the supernatural would continue to play out in the unseen worlds of the human experience, and the Watcher in the Shadows had been weakened but not conquered.